Hi and welcome to my tutorial on how to draw a foxglove. Um, the surface I'm using is a uh, pastel matte and uh, the colours I'm going to be using are pan pastels, some pastel pencil and probably a little bit of coloured pencil at the end to just add some detail. Um, I'll put the reference photo up here which is a free reference photo that I just found online um, so you know which one I'm working from. Um, so let's get started. Um, the pastel pencil that I use to do the outline is just a, a Stabilo Carbothello uh, pastel pencil and this one is in number four, uh, it's this 681 over 1400. Um, so what I normally do is just use the pastel pencil to map out the general shape of whatever it is I'm drawing. Now this picture has got quite a lot of blurriness in the background um, so I'm may do the background first actually because that is probably a cleaner way of working uh, so then we don't have to go around the edges of the flower and recover it in afterwards because if you do the subject first then the background then sometimes the background can kind of bleed over the subject so you have to sort of go around the edge which can be a bit of a waste of time really anyway so I'll just start by drawing the shape now you just just put very light pressure pressure and as you notice um I'm using a very light pastel pencil as well see that a really basic shape there's sort of the mouth of the flower there and later on we'll add some of these sort of spotty details in there um and then another one here just coming from underneath nice point of the mouth of the flower again there. Now pastel pencil and pastels in, in general are very forgiving so if you do make a little mistake you don't really have to worry about rubbing it out you can just draw the, the where the line should be because um, you can always colour over it later with the pan pastels. Very pretty flower foxglove. Go. have sort of ears on the side of them there. Right, okay, I think that's pretty much the shape and there's obviously some shadow there. Now I'm just going to get a slightly different coloured pastel pencil. This is a like a light grey which is 72, just to kind of map in where, oh no that's too dark, it's far too dark. <laughs> uh, map in where these sort of um, this greenery is, just around the edge, just to sort of give myself an idea when I start to do this. Um, pan pastel background here which is a lot of blurry fun by the looks of things you don't even have to really because this is all kind of this sort of area was all dark and then there's a big patch of dark green there and then there's some sort of camera spots there as well anyway so we've got the shape of the flower um, 
we'll start doing a little bit of work on the background now. So as you can see, I've got some colours here. Um, I think predominantly I'm going to be using this bright yellow green, which is a very nice colour, some Hansa yellow, um, the chromium oxide green, and perhaps some of the permanent green and some uh, white as well. Um, and I'm going to be using my sponge, which I have washed recently, but it just stains because it's so pigmented. So we'll start with a lighter colour. So maybe a, a bit of the bright yellow green mixed with some white. You can just mix it right on the pan. That's not a problem. And this background, because it's, it is just perfect, a blurry background is just perfect for a pan pastel piece because it just has, it, it looks so similar so quickly. And you just pick up the pigment and then dab it on. And with a big sponge, if you're finding that you're really struggling to get the pigment to spread out, then that just means that you haven't picked up enough. You, you just need to keep pressing onto the sponge To get a rounder effect, I sometimes bend the sponge like that, which makes the end of the sponge narrower. This is a lovely colour of yellow, don't you think? And a little bit of it there. Okay, and I think I might add a little bit of white as well, just to give it that sort of those different hues and stuff that are visible in the picture there. We just keep building up the colour so it's nice and blotchy and blurry like it is on the photograph. Um, I might start with some of the dark green here as well. And we can continue to blend this even more so. Oh, that was the um, chrome oxide green, by the way. As you can see, I'm picking up light of a dark there. You can actually just get a piece of ca uh, cartridge, pa cartridge paper or tissue paper and just in between using a different colour just wipe the sponge and it will just take the colour up and then you can just go back in with another colour. So you can see it's kind of really starting to take shape of how similar it looks to the, the photograph. quite quickly.
maybe just use a soft, oh, that's the wrong one, <laughs> a soft tool, just to blend that out a little bit. Oh yes, that's great, that's great. Now if you're new to Pom Pastels, the soft tools come with some of the 20 sets. I'm assuming they'll come with the 80 set as well if you buy everything all at once. There we go, this is working very nicely. Just using the, um, the same three colours there, just mixing as I go, just mix on the paper. This is pastel mat, so this will take years of layers. This, this pastel paper takes layers even when everyone else has gone home. That's how good it is. go and just keep swapping in between the colours don't be afraid to mix on the pan that's fine I always do it it's a very fun medium and if you're new to pan pastels don't be scared to try them you're watching this video and you haven't tried them and you've got them or you're thinking about getting them and just follow that urge and have a go is my advice you know at the moment most of the world is in some sort of restriction or lockdown so you might as well you might as well you might love it it certainly changed my artwork for the better given me the confidence to do something like this. There we go. If you just watch what I'm doing, I'm literally just going over different parts. And you can also turn the the soft tool sideways as well. To get some different effects. Just pick the sponge back up a bit and just try to blur this out a little bit. very therapeutic process. I suppose a lot of people like colouring in but this is the similar thing isn't it really? Let's try a slightly brighter yellow for that bit there. How's that looking? It's looking fairly similar to the picture isn't it? Okay um, and I'll just go over to this section here. I need the uh, chromium oxide green a bit there just around these edges. And if you're using a darker colour and you want to make it lighter, 
just start mixing it on the actual pan and then you can just transfer straight over to the paper if you're confident enough that those are the right colours and it will just work which isn't always the case but especially if you're new but it, it, it's something that you just you know you get that confidence as you go along but don't be scared by any means just have a go because like I said pastel is quite forgiving and if you're using pastel marks especially um, you can just go over it and over it Some of these really bright highlight, white highlights um, I will probably go over at the end with um, a waxy coloured pencil to um, really make those stand out. Where does all the pastel dust go? Who knows? <laughs> you can tell when you haven't put enough pastel on because it um it starts to drag across the paper it almost complains a bit. That's how you know. I actually do need to use um, a bit of a brown here. So handily, I have this, um, what is it, a burnt sienna? Yeah, I thought it was. Here. And I do actually need a dark brown, so I'm hoping that there'll be one in here. Nope, that's a rust. Something that looks like rust. Nope, that's black. Oh, there we go. Right, so this is uh, raw umber for this tree branch, which is coming up the side here. Just brush that over. Like I said, it's all blurry at the back. If you get some dust like that, don't worry, we can just colour over it later. It's not a problem. Just use the side of the, the brush to just drag some colour. Like Especially here, there's a little bit that's just a bit too thin. Use a tiny, tiny bit of black because that is a very dark bit there. There we go. Right. I think I need to use a little bit more white and mix with I'll mix with this green actually this permanent green just to get this bit of class here because that yeah that's a lovely color actually um like I say we can just add details at the end highlights and stuff it doesn't need to be too highlighted because obviously this is supposed to be blurry um just to sort of give it bit more detail now if you're following along with this drawing then please do feel free to let me know what you think of the tutorial and um, and send in if you would like a photo to my Facebook page or Instagram or wherever um, I have an album where I put um, photos from um, those who do my tutorials um, especially for your, your work so and it's lovely to see to be honest so if anyone wants to send in a photo if anyone would like any art advice or anything um you're welcome to contact me oh 
Right, so we're just on the last few stages really of doing this. And then we're going to move on to the flower, I think. There we go. You see how quickly the pan pastels cover that. Now, if there's anything at the end that I change my mind about, then I can just tidy that up then. But for the moment, I think we're going to move on using this rather luscious magenta um, and the white um, to start, start building up the colour on the flowers. That's got foxglove pink all over it, hasn't it? So it's going to be very much a case of just dabbing in between both. And to be honest, there's probably some sort of yellowish tones in this as well, you know. The set I'm using is the 20 Pure Colour set, by the way. start to use some of these um, little eyeshadow applicators as well because it is quite a small area and it is more um, convenient to be able to just colour the space more confidently when you have a smaller um, applicator. You see I'm putting some dark, some pink down, dark magenta down, and then I'm just going over the top with some white. Because these foxglove flowers are going to really come to life when um, you start putting the coloured pencil or the pastel pencil down. These are just like eyeshadow applicators. I think when we've gone over with the pink and just filled in all the space with the pink, I'm going to add some uh, light grey there because there are some greyish tones in this. But rather than just keep swapping colours, I'm just going to fill out the base here and then go back in with that. We might even add some blue. Don't forget also, I do have some other tutorials on my um, 
YouTube channel and, and on my Facebook page. You can watch the same tutorials on either. All are full length and all are completely free to watch. And as I said, if you need to ask any questions about a technique or how to do something or, you know, what supply or whatever, I mean, I do list a lot of stuff, in, well, most of the stuff I'm sure I do in the um, description box, but um, feel free to get in touch. I'm always happy to help advise people. And please let me know if you've enjoyed any of my tutorials so far. And if there is any subject you'd like me to do a tutorial on in the future, that would be nice. Now when you're, like I said earlier, if you feel like the um, applicator is dragging on the paper, that just means that you haven't put enough pigment down. So whack on some more pigment. Pan pastels last forever, so <laughs> well, that's how it feels like, apart from the white. The white does need replacing. But they are excellent value. And if you are new to Pan Pastels, there is a um, group on Facebook you can join um, called the uh, Pan Pastel Beginners Self Help Group where um, people share a lot of knowledge. It can be very intimidating to a beginner um, when you're finding a new medium. So that's why I'm trying to make these videos, to try to help people get the confidence to use them. And obviously times are a bit tough at the moment and people are a bit sad and, you know, things have happened in the last year which were unexpected all over the world so you know it's nice to just do something nice for someone else start mixing with a little bit of this neutral grey it's called pick up a tiny dot, I'm hardly even, you can see that, I'm hardly even touching the pan to just pick up the colour. That's how long lasting they are. I'm just trying to pull out this kind of slightly greyish tone that's in the mouth of the flowers while not still making it look too grey.
just get rid of some of this empty space in between. I'm coming close to the part where we need to start thinking about tidying up the flowers. as I said, doing the background before doing the final details on the subject is really imperative. So like a little bit of a leaf popping out there so we'll just cover that quickly so you can just accentuate it more at a later date. Just using circle motions Just going around with this white at the moment, just as some final stage touches before I start with the pastel pencils. Right, yes, I think I'm going to move on to the pastel pencils now. Let's just tidy up some of these edges, shall we? Now we're going for quite a painterly sort of look here. We're not going for hyperrealism. Um, I might actually start off with the white first. And these are all Stabilo Carbothellos, um, which if you buy the 60 set, which is this full set, they do come with pencil sharpener. I'm not sure if the um, smaller sets do but I would imagine they would to be honest they're not going to skimp on a pencil sharpener are they but if they are if they do you put that in the comments and let me know all of these little freckles inside of the mouth of the flower which are completely unique you don't have to worry about getting them identically to where they are exactly where they are Draw a bunch of strangely shaped circles and we'll we'll be fine. We'll be fine. My pastel pencils do generally go over pen and pastels. But sometimes if there are a few too many layers, sometimes it can be a bit more tricky, I think is the word to use. This is going okay though. It's going okay.
to try to concentrate on one flower at a time. And the watch, see the light is coming from the right. So the right hand side of the flowers are more Well, actually, well, on, on the right of this flower, but on this one, there's also light coming from their left, so. The, the colours, actually, by the way, are 365 uh, and then 76. You can just use a bit of the, the grey to just darken up. As I said, you can mix the pastel pan pastels on the paper, but you can also kind of mix the pencils as well. Back on this one, I was getting carried away there. Okay, and this is actually quite a dark shadowed section, so we'll just go over that with some of this grey and then just go over the top again. With the magenta. Now, if you're following along, you don't have to um, catch up with me as I'm in the speed that I'm going, but you can um, stop the video as and when you want to. I think what I'll probably do at the end is just go over with a white wax pencil to do these um, white marks. It doesn't matter if the flowers that um, you draw are slightly, you know, different to how it looks in the picture. Mine are slightly different, but I am trying to maintain some kind of speed here. And you could use the grid method uh, if you wanted it to be, uh, you know, exactly perfect, um, which is a good method, but it's also very time consuming. I prefer to just draw straight on the paper, to be honest. This white one isn't really taking that well, um, which is fine, but I think I'll just go over with the coloured pencils. But this, these pastel pencils are giving me a bit more shape and definition, as you can see.
keep swapping in between the pencils. Swap out. Hold them, there's not many. Hold them in the, your non-drawing hand. And then just keep going back to swap to another another colour. So it is helpful if you just start on one pencil, uh, not one pencil, one flower, and then move along. Or you can be erratic like me and go, ooh, <laughs> a flower, like Dory would. <laughs> and then you sort of get back to the thing you were supposed to be doing. It's okay to be erratic as an artist. It's a part of our charm. Right, so what I'm going to do now is start to use some colour pencils. Um, the ones that I'm using probably predominantly are these um, Cavendish Pablos, but you can use any colour pencil. These are wax-based. Most colour pencils are generally wax-based. Like you could use Prismacolors and some, some, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so I'll do the same thing that I did with the um, white um, pastel pencil. I had to think of what I was talking about then, um, and start going around the edges just to sort of bring out the details and this will be far more visible and if you see how nicely the um, wax pencil goes over the pan pastel really nicely And as I said earlier, we will just start pulling out of these, um, pulling out these little freckly kind of things with the wax based pencil. like a dark plum sort of colour. Add a little bit of shading with the pencil. This is purple violet, but just found a find a similar one. That's like a plummy colour. You might just use a tiny bit of a dark grey here as well, maybe a tiny bit of black actually as well. Try to maintain a sharp tip on the pencil as well for these fine details. 
can just use tiny like light layers, flicks of black there. You don't have to don't don't shade with too much black, especially not a piece like this. Sort of tease a bit of, of black into the picture. See the white goes over really nicely, nice and sharp. Sometimes I think that the base layer of Pam Hassel looks quite watercolour-ish. But it is a really, really great base. Because you can make lots of marks beforehand and if you do one slightly off then you can just sort it out before you put anything more permanent down like pencil. Actually we'll start with using, I might sharpen this actually. This is my sharpener, the swordfish icon, which is a quite handle sharpener. Here we go. I always say that, there we go. <laughs> Okay, that makes it so much easier. All of these sort of abstract, intricate kind of freckly patterns that are inside the mouth of the flowers. Just make a few marks, and, um, not just dots, make all sorts of different marks. And then with the purple and then go over around the edges with the right pencil. To make it look more realistic. There we go. How easy is that? It's a bit of a sort of where the light is hitting around the edge there on this top flower. Let's go back over some of these ones, make them a bit more dark. Constantly blowing the dust away, really. It's an endless battle. There's a, a big pile of dust in my house somewhere. Pastel dust, which when I blow the dust away here, 
that's where it all goes. It all just congregates in one spot and I can never find it. It's a big pastel dust conspiracy is what it is. There's probably one in your house as well. <laughs> That's just silly. I was just going over with the um, purple pencil and then going round with the the white to give it some shine. Anyway, it's the same principle. I really am trying to make as good a video as I can. <laughs> well, I'm doing doing my best as a beginner video maker. I hope they do help you. Yeah, so just purple and then round with the white. Now, like I said, we're not going for hyper-realism here. We're going for a nice sort of painterly drawing. Using this uh, purple violet. But you can blend on the paper as well. It's pastel mat. Layers for years, remember. Pastel mat is like the Pandora's box of paper. Just doing some nice long lines there. Add some of this violet for some of the shading inside the top of the roof of the mouth of the flower. Maybe go over with a slightly lighter pink. Well, this one says it's purple, but it's definitely pink. I've never heard of a dishonest pencil before, have you? How's that looking? My cat has just come to see me, one of them. <laughs> Making sure I'm doing it right. Right, so we're just back on these spots again, these ripples. Just draw them. You don't have to copy exactly the same. You know, this is this tutorial is to sort of give you the confidence to try pan pastels and pastels pencils and um, just have a go really and see if you you know enjoy using them and hopefully. Make something nice for your wall. Go over with this white around the edges. 
every foxglove must have completely unique freckles, mustn't it? Draw some light with the white pencil. The white pencil is good because it blends colours for you and it also adds highlights. Okay, we'll move on to this lower flower now. Same principle applies. Let me know if you've enjoyed the tutorial or if you're in the middle of watching the tutorial. Let me know where you're from. That'd be nice. How you're doing in general and with the drawing, you know. Say hi. Swapping between the pencils there again. Into this purple that's really a pink. So on this pink again, I might actually sharpen that quickly. Just on the last flower with the um, purple pencil again, the violet. This is real purple. <laughs> and then round the outsides of these freckles with the white. Make sure it's nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. add a few last sort of highlights here around the edges as well because the light is going around the edge of the pencil let's sort of define it from the background there
use the grey on the underside a little bit just because it's slightly in shadow. Adding a little bit of shadow around these freckles give the um, shape of the flower a bit more definition through the shade. Using this um, purple violet again. Draw in this bit of detail here. I'll just use the white to kind of create these kind of camera spots here. I'm just do a little bit of work on this bit here. As I said earlier, we'll just pull out these highlights using the white pencil. This is all Camel Dash Pal Blues that I'm using. You don't need to press too hard, but I just like to um, blow away the dust. It's a tiny bit of green there. This um, is it my olive green? Thought it was. Blow away the dust as you're applying the colour from the pencil, so it doesn't really get mixed up. Use a tiny bit of this uh, spruce green. Going around the edge there with the spruce green again. the white, let's blur this out a little bit, blur any darker colours which you don't want over with the white or use a similar colour of a lighter shade.
I've got some stalk up here. And just burnish that in. That's fine. Just add a little bit of darker green around here. bit of burnt sienna here for this brown sort of section. I think just add a little tiny bit more of the white there. I think this is coming towards completion really. Need a tiny bit more maybe a tiny bit of yellow as well push the boat out yeah so there we go there's a um, a foxglove drawing with a blurry background um, using palm pastels pastel pencils a tiny bit and uh, colored pencils on a white pastel mat which I just cut down to size um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you haven't already checked out my other tutorials, please check my videos, um, either on Facebook or um, YouTube. They're all on there. They're all free to watch and they're all full length. And if you did like it, please just like the video or leave me a comment. That'd be lovely. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, be back soon for the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.